I know a lot of people think that they're all, these people are all drug addicts and they all, it's not the case. It's like they've had uh, uh, things happen to them in their life that, you know, it's, uh, it, it put them out here. Being homeless is no joke and I don't know why they decide to live out here. Everybody has their own reasons. Mine is my sister. I was talking to Dylan and Darlene about what the challenges are to solving homelessness in the South County and likely in other spaces as well. And what we came up with was that the biggest challenge is the community's consensus on how to address homelessness and the solutions. And what we found was that beginning conversations where the housed and the unhoused could come together and talk about their experience seemed to be the place where we might be able to overcome some misinformation and bridge people in a more human way toward reaching a collective solution. My name is Tim Davis. I'm the executive director at the South County Compassion Center. The South County Compassion Center provides for the basic needs for unhoused residents here in South Santa Clara County. And we also provide a pathway toward housing for our residents. My name is Erica Rosenberg, and I'm an educator, a scientist, a teacher, an expert in facial expressions of emotion, and also um, someone who's been working in the field of compassion and the development of compassion for over 20 years. My name is Dylan Johnston. I'm a filmmaker, co-founder of Shadow Power Productions. I'm also a recovering heroin addict and a formerly unhoused individual. My name is Darlene D. Rose. Together with Dylan Johnston, I am a co-founder and partner of Shadow Power Productions. Our role in the project is to film the events, the activities, the connections that get made as people are brought together to learn compassion for themselves and for others. I see my role as something very simple, just making connections between folks who care about the problem of homelessness and those who are actually suffering that problem. So. I'm more the, more of a, a connector of people, and I believe that the important work that is going to happen is going to happen from the people involved in this process. We're trying to build bridges where they weren't naturally there by by helping people cultivate what's naturally inside them. And this is this my so my role coming into this was to help you know design this element based on my experience with compassion cultivation. I believe we're all compassionate beings. I think what I would define as compassion is simply being able to identify with somebody else who's suffering or your own suffering. Um, I think some people confuse compassion with pity and pity is, comes from a completely different place. It's feeling sorry for somebody, you know, you're up here, the person who's whole, taking pity on somebody who's down here. But compassion really kind of comes from people who have experienced suffering in their own life and can connect with someone else's suffering for that specific thing. So compassion is really a way of unifying us with other people directly, connecting us with the human experience in someone else. And I, I honestly believe that we all have that ability. And I don't think it takes a whole lot of training for that to happen. When people of disparate groups have a common goal and they have to work together, it gets rid of a lot of those things that separate them. Like seeing, you know, like, like stereotypes, oh, they're all that way. You know, all that simplistic thinking that we do without groups gets eroded when we become part of one in-group. When people are actually face to face with someone who is experiencing homelessness, typically their preconceived ideas about what it is like for somebody who is homeless dissolves and they meet people on an individual level. And I find that these human interactions really result in progress towards a solution. So we want to create one bigger group. We would like to draw on what we know about 
helping people grow their own comp compassionate nature. The kind of tools that have been used in the courses like CCT to reinforce that by reflection, by engaging in certain like exercises for um, working with compassionate language, all these tools that make it easier for us to connect to people who we might not have ordinarily connected with. We're trying to build bridges where they weren't naturally there by, by helping people cultivate what's naturally inside them. stop by and bring uh, pizza, uh, uh, McDonald's, they bring like 20, 30 McDonald's uh, cheeseburgers or Costco pizza and they're like, hey, we got some, you guys are hungry, we got pizza for you. And they're dropping out and they're, it seems like they're more in tune to what's going on because people that are out here have never been out here before and this COVID thing has got a lot of people uh, out here on, uh, and they're realizing that, hey, you know, it's real. You know, and the struggle was real. You know, people are out here doing this stuff and it's not by choice. You know, this, this uh, COVID thing, you got, I got a lot of people in places where they would never thought they would end up, you know. They live check to check and now they don't have a check. You know, uh, they're gonna be out here too, you know, so. They've seen what it's like. Yeah, they get a little taste of uh, that. It, it don't take much to be out here. One of the ways you can help us is through fundraising. Maybe you wanna donate on your own behalf, or reach out to friends and family who could donate to this project. Maybe you know a foundation contact for a grant for the project or the grant funding arm of a corporation. Any of those connections or donations would be very appreciated as we move forward and develop this program. One of the things that I think is really important for us to all make to make clear to everybody who sees this is that each of us who is here are volunteering our time. With this, we are here from the heart um, and um, so we are seeking support from people who want to play a role. There might be, a, there's so many opportunities for volunteers. You know, one is in this initial, you know, hit the ground running and going to some of the pop-ups that, that Tim's organization has to start talking to people in the unhoused community and, you know, sharing things with people in the housed community about what our vision is. We also need a lot of practical help, um, getting a social media presence so people know about our um, work. Um, anybody have real good skills for website development? We need something really rudimentary. Even just facilities, materials, and spreading the word in the community. We might actually need some more programmatic help, like, like someone who can do like administrative assistant on a small scale to help support some of the logistical correspondence and reaching out to certain people that's needed for this project. So, you know, we feel like, you know, everybody's got some skills that might play a role here. If, you, if you're motivated by what we're trying to do, let us know. You know, we'll have some contact information available on screen here. Let us know anything that you think might be helpful here, even if it's something that we haven't mentioned. You know, it might be helpful to, to our vision and to implementing it because we can have these great ideas and then making it real. So you could help us make it real. You might look at me and think, there's no way that this person was homeless or a heroin addict. I've had people say that to me many times. And I think what that underlines is that there is no such thing as the typical unhoused human. That's one of the things that I would hope that this project can help teach us as participants in it and the world at large. Ultimately, by helping people be part of the same community, you know, it will start, it will go a long way to have an effect on solving some serious problems, not just in Gilroy, but in the whole world. I see this project specifically as a key to making the change that will really solve the problem instead of just putting band-aids on it. Um, and that's why I'd like to share it.